Hello students. How have you been enjoying your lockdown? I hope you've been enjoying and the watching lessons online. My name is Sophie Dozo Joyce. Biology teacher in Federal Government College Port Harcourt. I want to present today a topic in SS1 that is titled Diffusion. At the end of this lesson, our students are supposed to be able to define the term diffusion, demonstrate diffusion in gases, demonstrate diffusion in solids, state at least two factors that can affect the rate of diffusion. So, what is diffusion? Diffusion can be defined as the movement of gaseous or liquid molecules from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration through the medium of air or liquid until equilibrium is reached. For instance, if a rat dies at one corner of your room, a stench will be coming out. How do you trace where that rat died? Obviously, you will follow the trench because the trench must have filled the room. You follow it until you get to where you have a higher stench of that smell and eventually you will see the rat. That's exactly what diffusion is all about. If you enter into a compound or you enter into a kitchen, the aroma coming from your mother's stew would have filled the whole room. And that makes you to do what starts salivating. At that point in time, you can say that diffusion has done what? Taking place. At this junction, we want to quickly demonstrate diffusion in gases. This is just a perf or perfume. You can get it anywhere and uh, as I demonstrate, you can also do that. All you need to do is, this is my classroom. If I spray this perfume in front of the class, after some time, somebody at the back of my class will do what? We perceive it. What has simply happened is what? Diffusion. You know what? Where I spread it, which is the front of the class, is the area of higher concentration. Then gradually and slowly it will do what? Diffuse into the air and get to the back. By the time it gets to the back of the class, we say that equilibrium has done what has been reached. This is just a simple demonstration of what? Diffusion in gases. Okay, we also want to demonstrate diffusion in solid. You know that uh, solid can diffuse through a liquid. So we want to um, demonstrate diffusion of solid in liquid using potassium permanganate. Okay. If I drop a crystal of this potassium permanganate inside this water, please watch. Are you seeing what is happening? You will see a trail. At zero minutes, you see a trail. Can you see it? A trail of the color of this potassium permanganate, which is purple. Then you drop it, you're going to time yourself. Five minutes, what, what happens? After five minutes, you will see that the crystal has started dissolving inside the water. At the area 
where it was dropped, you can see that the color is denser. The color is denser. You can see it. Very dense at the bottom. That's the area or the region of higher concentration. Okay, so it's moving through the medium of this liquid. Then you continue five minutes, 10 minutes, you will see some layers. It must have formed some layers, lighter color. You can see the top is very light, followed by this is lightest. The top is lightest. You have light, and then you have very, very dark color beneath. As you continue, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, because of time. When you continue watching it, you at the end of 20 minutes, you would say that the whole liquid has been colored what? Purple, showing that equilibrium has been reached. So this is just um, a clear demonstration of diffusion of solids in liquid. You know, you can also use um, your laundry blue, most of you. You know what laundry blue is. Just add it. You may not be able to get potassium permanganate. Just get that laundry blue. Get a, a, a bottle of water, a beaker of water, and drop it. And you watch osmosis doing what? Taking place. So that is just a clear demonstration of diffusion of solid in water. I hope you are following. Do you understand? All right. We also want to look at some factors that can affect the rate of diffusion. Like we've stated, it is the movement. A molecule moves from one end to the other. So some factors actually can speed up this rate of what? Diffusion. You know, maybe we've been speaking some English. Let's calm down. If you get a cube of sugar and add it in hot water, what happens? Tell me. You would have noticed that what? It dissolves faster, isn't it? In hot water, unlike in what? Cold water. So what does that tell you? That what? Heat or increase in temperature affects the rate of what? Diffusion. Do you understand? Also, stirring. You know what? Most of the things we do, if we don't know the, the chemistry and biological implication, when you stir something, what are you doing? You are making the molecules to do what? Move faster. When you are shaking it, it moves what? Faster. What have you done? You, all, you, all you have done is to what? Increase the, the rate of bombing, making the van der Waal forces holding this... Um, these molecules to do what? Break so that they can move what? Faster. That's exactly what happens in what? In gases. And that's why when I spray perfume, you can easily, it flows faster. Why? Because it has a very weak van der Waal force or force of cohesion holding it. And that's why gases move faster than in liquid than what? In solid. So stirring also does what? Helps to do what? Increase the rate of diffusion. Finally, we have the state of matter. If you have been following me, you must have learned that. We have what? Three types of matter. You have solid, you have liquid, you have what? Gases. Therefore, you know, because um, the force of cohesion in gas are what? Weak. What happens? They tend to do what? Move faster, faster, faster. So, the state of matter, because it's a gas, it moves faster. Liquid has, you know, a little strong cohesion, force of cohesion, so it doesn't move up. But solid, solid needs to dissolve in liquid for it to be able to what? Move. So, at this junction, we want to call it a day. Um, in a subsequent lesson, we we'll also bring about, bring to you, importance of diffusion in living organisms or in living things. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Okay.
um, you have some assignments to do. You write down life processes in animals, in plants that involve the process of diffusion to show its importance. Briefly, you watch some slides to show diffusion in solids using potassium permanganate crystals. Okay, um, I just want to show you diagrammatically what I have demonstrated earlier on using potassium permanganate crystals. Um, immediately after dropping the crystal, like you saw when it was demonstrated, you will see a trail of purple color. Then after five minutes, you would have noticed that the crystal sank into the measuring cylinder that we used and there you had a very dark color at the bottom as you can see from your diagram very dark color dense purple color then to be followed by a lighter purple layer and then you see your water clear because equilibrium has not what been reached then after about 10 minutes, you will see more layers, deep purple layer, light purple layer, lighter purple layer, and you still see clear water. Then after about 20 minutes or one hour, you would have noticed that the whole, look at it there, you would have noticed that the whole water has been run colored purple meaning that equilibrium has been reached is that clear all right now what let us recap our objective for this lesson one we went ahead to dis define the meaning of what diffusion Secondly, we demonstrated diffusion in gases. Thirdly, we demonstrated diffusion in solid using potassium permanganate crystals. And lastly, we stated factors that can enhance the rate of what diffusion. Thank you. God bless you.